mentioned the other day, almost always with these cable problems, and you can just about guarantee that you're going to have one on the exam. This one's very, very, very common. Almost always the first part is just where you have to find the slope of the secant line. Almost always. Okay. Uh, part B, we need to use the data in the table to evaluate the integral from 0 to 20 of w prime of t. Well, what is the integral of a derivative? It's the original function. So this would be w of 20 minus w of 0, which in this case would be 71 minus 55, which is 16 degrees. Um, interpret the meaning of that in the context of this problem. Well, that's just the change in the temperature over that amount of time. So the water has, uh, you could either say that it's warmed by 16 degrees Fahrenheit or it has increased by 16 degrees Fahrenheit uh, over those 20 minutes. Okay. Um, let's see. It, it straight up tells us that the average temperature of the water is given by 1 over 20 times the integral from 0 to 20. It says use a Riemann sum. Use the left Riemann sum with the four subintervals to approximate it. I think we should be good with that. This is calculator active. So use your calculator. Okay. Uh, you do kind of need to show the setup. Uh, you need to show what numbers you're using. Uh, but then you can use your calculator to crunch the numbers to get 60.79. Then they ask, is it an overestimate or an underestimate? Is it an overestimate or an underestimate? Um, so how do we know whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate? Okay, well, what's more important than the concavity, though? What are you saying, Mallory? Yeah, there is. There is. Isn't it under because it's increasing? Right, okay. It is increasing. It is an increasing function. So whether that increasing function is concave up or whether that increasing function is concave down, a left Riemann sum is always going to be an underestimation. Okay. Regardless of the concavity, when it is increasing, it is going to be an underestimation. And that's all you have to say is because it is a strictly increasing function, um, then it is an underestimate with the left Riemann sum. All right, part D, it says between time 20 and 25, so beyond the data that we have in the table, the function that models the water temperature has the first derivative given by this function. Based on the model, what is the temperature of the water at time 25? Well, to find the temperature at time 25, we know the temperature at time 20. It is 71 degrees, so we start at 71 degrees, plus what do we need to use? An integral, okay, from 20 to 25 of um, this other function. I do not like that they've used the same variables, um, but of the w prime, because when you integrate a derivative, you're summing together um, what that derivative, or the original, they gave that derivative. So you're summing up those temperatures so that, uh, again, use your calculator. Okay, do not try to integrate that by hand. Okay, don't do it. Just plug it into your calculator. Make your calculator. You have to, you need to show the setup. Okay, you should always, always, always show the setup. And you should probably label this W25. Okay, the temperature of the water at time 25. Show your setup, but then you can just say that that is 73.043. Uh, I would put units on it. It doesn't say anything about needing units. The answer key doesn't have units on it, but it can never, ever, ever hurt to put your units on the answer. Okay, so it increases about two more degrees. Hmm? 
Usually. Yes. Yes, because usually with these you're doing the integral of a rate. So then the answer will be, yes, not the rate, but the units before the rate. So whether it be ounces or, in this case, degrees or miles, um, it's, it's gonna, you're going to lose the unit of time, typically. All right, so not too bad, right? I mean, 